Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. This is Shaitan here from Design Pilot and I am back again today with another video which is going to be much different than my usual tutorial videos. This is going to be more of like a tech video because I'm going to be showing you guys a product that has been built and created exclusively for designers. We are going to be taking a look at the Palette Gear. I'm going to be talking to you guys about what the Palette Gear is, what it's used for, how much it costs, whether it's worth buying it and so on and so forth. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now I would really like to start off by thanking the guys over at Palette Gear for sending over their expert kit over to me so that I could take a look and make this video. I would also like to thank my good friend Suraj from Tech Devoted who helped me shoot all the scenes for making this video. He too has a YouTube channel where he uploads tech related content. He posts really high quality videos and very interesting videos so if you guys are definitely interested check him out link will be in the description. Alright so what is the Palette Gear? Now the Palette Gear is is a modular hardware device that provides creators with personalized control enabling you to blaze through your editing tasks with fast, precise, hands-on control. I know that sounds very fancy, but yeah, that's the truth. So let's take a look at what makes up the Palette Gear. It basically consists of four types of modules that are built from aluminium and has a weight that varies from 46 to 86 grams and is also super magnetic. Now the main part is the pallet core which is an OLED screen to which you connect a micro USB and the other end goes into your system. Up next we have a dial which has an infinite rotation and is also clickable. And then we have the button which looks more of a arcade style gaming button and gives you an immensely satisfying experience when you press it just like those mechanical keyboards that you guys love. And finally we have a pretty big slider that is the heaviest among the four modules. The slider isn't super smooth but it is pretty smooth. So now let's go inside and get this bad boy up and running. Now for all those of you who constantly keep on asking me which laptop I use, well here it is. I use the Dell 9, which is a part of the Inspiron 15 series uh, and the model I have has 8GB of RAM, 4GB of graphics and 1TB of internal storage. Now one thing I forgot to mention to you guys is the base of these modules. Now the body is made up of aluminium but the base is made up of rubber which firmly keeps them on the desk and they do not slide off even if you nudge them or hit them a bit hard. So that's really cool. Now in order to connect the modules you need to connect the male and the female pins that are there on every module or else it will not work. You can arrange the modules in any way you want based on the functions you assign to each module and the placements of the dials, the sliders and the buttons which complement your workflow so there's a lot of flexibility. Now once that is done, the final step is to take the USB, connect it from your system to the pallet core and voila! Now the pallet gear is compatible with Mac and Windows and can be, and can be used with a wide variety of software such as Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Audition, After Effects, Illustrator, InDesign, Chrome, Lightroom, even VLC, Spotify, Final Cut Pro and Character Animator and much much more. You can check out the entire list on their website. Alright guys, so this is the Pilot Gear website and I'm quickly going to show you about the website and uh, what you can find on the website before we actually get into uh, the technical part of using the Pilot Gear. So uh, it gives you a small video as to uh, what Pilot Gear is used for, definitely check that out. Um, and everything is mentioned over here, all you need to know and the way basically the Pilot Gear works is uh, based on a concept called profile and each profile has a set of functions to each dial, right? So. For example, let's say you use Photoshop, you could use Photoshop for graphic design work, you could use it even for photo editing. So the kind of functions that you would need in the photo editing workflow is going to be different than the graphic design workflow. So there are a couple of featured uh, profiles that are over here, I'm going to talk about that more. And here we have the four modules that I uh, mentioned in the video. Alright, so uh, the Palette Gear support team has been fantastic right from the time I reached out to them and right till the time I got the device and I tested it out and had a few questions. They were very good, very responsive, good customer service. That's something that's really important when a company uh, that's just a new and a small company uh, that is trying to make a difference in the world. So really appreciate that. So if you have any question, you can definitely reach out. Uh, then I know there are a lot of FAQs and help center and you can contact them and so on and so forth. All right. 
All right, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go and download their software. This is obviously after purchasing the product. Um, you know, you can go ahead and I'm gonna show you the specifications. So for Windows, you need Windows 7 or higher. I'm pretty sure everybody has that. 64-bit machine, two gigabytes of RAM and hardly 100 megabytes of storage and if you're on a mac then you just need ox 10.9 all right so that's pretty much it and I'm, I'm not going to show you how to install it and stuff i mean you can you can figure that out on your own but uh let me show you once the app is installed so so this is how the app looks like it shows you all the uh part all the softwares that the palette gear is compatible with based on what is there in your system all right, so for the, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using Illustrator as an example. Now, if you guys want me to make a video on using it for Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, for Photoshop or Lightroom, just let me know in the comment section and I'll make a video on that. So when you open up, this is what you're gonna get. Uh, this is basically the layout of um, how you have laid out your palette gear uh, components. Now, if I remove one uh, and if I can, I can go ahead and then just place them in a different location, as you can see. All right, there we go. So these are the functions as you can see that is, has been assigned to each uh, module and uh, you can choose a different profile over here. So I, since I have the expert kit, uh, I can't use the professional kit or the starter kit. Uh, I need to use the, uh, the illustration kit. Now if you want to use profiles that have, been dis that have been created by others, you can go on to their website. And if you come to the profile section, you can see these are all the kind of profiles that have been built for the respective uh, softwares. So for if I click on After Effects over here, uh, it gives me all these different functions that have been assigned. And uh, let's see if I go to Illustrator, unfortunately there is only one for Illustrator. All right, uh, this is just a small start starter pack, kind of a preset, nothing too great about that. But if you go for something like Photoshop, uh, let's go photo, photo, Photoshop, we've got two. Uh, we've got something for UX design, which is pretty cool. So un we undo, red, zoom, duplicate, blue scale, that's pretty good. Uh, let's go and choose Lightroom. Lightroom has quite a lot and uh, even Premiere Pro, I believe. So let's just check out Premiere Pro. There we go, we got a lot of profiles. So basically, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So let's see how this actually works. So the first thing you're gonna do is you just, you just have to tap on one and it's gonna open up this dialog box. And here we have the Illustrator CC mode, we have the keyboard mode, Windows mode, and function mode. All right, now as you can see here, there are different colors that I can assign. So I can choose a red color, I can choose a yellow color, and that's automatically gonna make the module glow in that color. Uh, so I'm just gonna make everything orange for now, just for the sake of having everything orange. And there you go. So as you can see, these two don't have anything assigned to them, uh, but we can go ahead and assign. Now the kind of function that can be assigned to each uh, of these elements is different. So the slider has a separate set, the button has a separate set, and the dial has a separate set of functions. So let's jump into Illustrator and actually get this uh, running and show you how it works. All right, so here I'm in Illustrator and uh, usually I do a lot of mascot logo designs on Illustrator. And the way I start off is by getting the type tool. So I usually press T on my keyboard, uh, which is gonna give me the type tool and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna type in, uh, let's say, palette. Right, and now I would scale it. You can definitely go ahead and scale it, but sometimes it would be much easier when you have a lot of height, a lot of paths, and a lot of vectors on the project. It's better if you could scale it with the dial. So if I go and I have set this to scale selection. So if I click on that, as you can see, it says scale selection. Now these are all the various parameters I can get for the dial. So I can choose the font, stroke color, uh, the fill color. Now for the fill color, Illustrator allows you to uh, change it only to RGB, but I guess Photoshop uh, allows you to change the hue. So if you just spin it, the color changes automatically. So let's quickly check that out if we do have a profile for that. So uh, I'm just gonna type in hue and yes, so the foreground hue can be changed just by turning the dial, which is pretty cool. Uh, so coming back over here, going to the scale selection. So right now I'm just I'm just tapping my dial and as you can see, it's uh, increasing the size. Uh, that is uh, pretty cool. Now you can't do everything with the palette gear. There are some things that you have to do. Now, for example, if I want to set this to the center, I would have to drag it and align it to the vertical and horizontal center. Now, obviously the palette gear team is working very hard on bringing in more functions to uh, the, the kit, allowing you to, to perform more functions uh, on the palette gear rather than using on your keyboard. All right, so the next thing I would do is I would, I would want to change the font, all right? So to change the font, if I click here, it's gonna give me a bunch of fonts and moving through this is a big pain. So how do I fix that issue? 
So pretty simple, you go back and uh, let's choose the dial again and this kind I'm gonna choose type in font and I can choose a font family. And as you can see, I also have an advanced section where I can change the sensitivity. So I'm gonna set it to high for now and I'm gonna click on done. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna just press the dial and as you can see, it automatically changes and I can quickly start glancing through the one that I want rather than using your arrow keys, which is really, really, really helpful. All right, I think we can go with this. All right, and I'm gonna center this down. Now I feel this is a bit thick, so I wanna reduce the stroke size. So we can add in um, a function, which is the stroke weight. So this is the dial. So I'm gonna go back to palette gear and I'm gonna slowly reduce down the size, the stroke weight. As you can see, this is obviously the default stroke weight, so I can't go below this, but I can go ahead and go above this. All right, so let's actually go and choose a thinner font. Uh, okay, let's let's say we just pick this one and I can increase the stroke weight of this, which is pretty cool. So unfortunately in Illustrator, there, are, there aren't a lot of things that you can do, but if you are using the palette gear for the purpose of uh, making uh, editing in Premiere Pro or using Photoshop, then obviously your hands would be adjusted to the palette gear and you could definitely use that a little bit for the illustration work as well. And uh, so let's take a look at the slider. So this is the selection opacity and the zoom. So I can uh, reduce the opacity as you can see, it's a hundred percent now and I can bring that down and it's gonna become zero. So I'm just moving the slider left and right and uh, we can see the result. Now, the zoom in and zoom out, there you go. Uh, zoom out and zoom in, all right? Uh, that's, that's another thing. Now, the other things you can do with the slider is obviously the opacity. You can even pan left and right. And for the button, um, let's select this one and I can even choose a particular tool. So usually I would use a lot of the pen tool and the selection tool. So I can select this one. So I can select this one to be the, uh, let's choose the selection tool and this one to be the pen tool. All right, so I'm just gonna choose a pen tool. All right, so you've got the pen tool and the selection tool. So if I go back to Premiere Pro, if I press this button, I get the pen tool. And then once I finish done, I can, uh, usually I could either press V on my keyboard, which also would be an ideal situation. But since my hands are already there on the palette gear and one hand is on the mouse, I can press the other one to get back to the selection tool. There you go, so I can get pen tool, selection tool, pen tool and selection tool. Pretty good. And uh, that's pretty much it on how you work with the palette gear. So coming on to our last bit, we're gonna talking about the pricing. Now, this is a little expensive product because it is really high quality and is really helpful in many scenarios. And, re and I wouldn't say it reduces your workflow by 50%, but definitely helps you work faster, a little bit faster. And uh, the Pro Kit comes with all these and it costs $500 as you can see over here. And it also includes a bonus slider. Ta-da, there you go. And uh, the Pro Kit, you can also get a hundred hundred dollar gift card and the one that was sent over is the expert kit which costs three hundred dollars now this is going to be like a one-time investment if you have a large clientele base where uh, the clients pay a lot of money you can consider spending this uh, for a one-time investment but if you're just starting out and trying to get a job for something this is something that i wouldn't recommend but it is definitely something that uh, would be pretty cool to have and uh, i can you can get the gift card over here with the expert kit and this is the starter kit and you can also buy individual pieces if you don't want uh, you know to buy the whole set or stuff. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video guys Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it uh, If you have any questions or requests, let me know in the comment section down below Make sure to leave a like and I'll definitely see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye